kill him. <laughs> oh, oh, kill him. Oh, kill him. Oh, kill him. What is up, YouTube? So much has been going on in the sports world, and I just want to share it with you. I didn't know when to put out a video because so much was going on. I was like, should I put it out before? Should I put it out after? But it's after a lot of the events and a lot of events are still going on. So we'll see what's going on with that. Um, this in, in this video is all improv. I'm just going to go off the top of my head. Uh, think about everything that's going on and go from there. All right. So the World Cup, the United States of America. Aren't you proud? Aren't you proud? The underdog tradition of the United States men's national team since the 2002 years have given them immense uh, popularity and root cheering for and stuff and has really brought the World Cup uh, at a higher market every single World Cup since 2002, in my opinion. And um, I think it's great for the game of football. Maybe uh, eventually, you know, after all these years in the World Cup, you know, after one World Cup, two World Cups, you know, it's been a few World Cups since 2002. Um, one, two, two or three to be exact. We're on the third one to be exact. So maybe, you know, by the fifth or sixth World Cup, people are going to finally, you know, Americans are going to buy more into investing in the game of football. And I think that's it's kind of difficult if you're not a diehard right now for the American, if the best leagues, if the NBA is overseas and you're stuck with the MLS, which is like, you know, you know, it's kind of like, you know, playing overseas in basketball. It, the, all the players aren't particularly bad, but it's like, you know, we know where the best players are. They're overseas in the Premier Leagues and the Chelsea's are. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know much about the game of football, to be honest, outside of international play in the World Cup. But the United States, they're getting it done once again. And it's that underdog, diehard, you know, never quit trying attitude that just keeps them there. And it's not just that. Maybe the U.S. should get a little crap. Maybe they're a good team. Have you ever thought of that? Only 32 teams, only 32 countries make the World Cup every year. And for the United States to do it and... Make it to advance past the group stage. Three out of the last four World Cups. Maybe it's not just the underdog. United. Maybe they're a good team. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. All right, so that's what uh, my thoughts on the USA and their World Cup ventures. Uh, go USA. All that good stuff. And, um, yeah. So here we go with the NBA. The NBA draft was last night. Andrew Wiggins went number one. There was a lot of trade rumors. Are the Cleveland going to trade for Kevin Love? Are they going to trade to make room for LeBron? Will they pass up on uh, on Parker and Wiggins, both wingmen, to drive Embiid to make room for LeBron? And, you know, LeBron's not coming back to Cleveland. Let me just get that straight now. LeBron James is not coming back to Cleveland. If I was LeBron James, all business, all whatever I said promised to the fans in the city of Cleveland, after I leave somewhere and they're burning my jersey and they're spitting on my last name and spitting on my family name, I'm not going back regardless of what y'all do. You guys, you totally disrespected me when I made my own personal decision. Did I like the decision? No. But I didn't like more so how the city of Cleveland, including their own owner, uh, reacted to the situation so I just thought the whole thing was unprofessional and everything and I just don't like that oh we're just gonna forget about it and bring LeBron back for you no mm, LeBron don't don't do it bro forget about the business and the money or whatever you, you know bro just keep your dignity please keep your dignity LeBron James that's all I'm asking don't go back to Cleveland and um so yeah uh trade rumors there's a lot of trade rumors. Not a lot of trades went down, but some did. Aaron LaFlala went back to the Denver Nuggets uh, after an all-star caliber season this past year with Orlando. He probably would have made the all-star team if he wasn't on Orlando. And he was on, uh, I don't know how to say this, an actual good team in the East, which is kind of a uh, you know, paradox. But it is what it is. And... Um, also, Raymond Felton and Tyson Chandler got traded back to the Mavericks, so it was kind of like a lot of deja vu stuff. 
Uh, Jose Calderon is going to the Knicks. Uh, the Knicks also drafted a point guard, I believe, last night. So uh, we'll see. You know, the Knicks they're they're trying to they're trying to keep it together. It's all falling apart for the Knicks, and they're just trying to keep it together right now. And Knicks fans, I'm I'm praying for y'all. <laughs> That's all I can say. Knicks fans, I'm praying for y'all. Uh, also, the NHL draft was tonight, and um, Alex, let me see his name. No, excuse me. Aaron Eckblad was the first overall pick to the Florida Panthers. And they said there was a, a pre-draft debate on who was going to go first in the NHL draft. So now you know it's Aaron Eckblad. Uh, Eckblad. Uh, excuse me if I mispronounce your name, uh, butchered your name. I'm trying to expound my world of sports analysis and stuff like that. Um, also, Wimbledon, overseas, speaking of overseas earlier, uh, Andy Murray uh, advanced to the round of 16, and he's been pretty much unbeatable in his home court since the Olympics. So why pick against the hot man that's hot, you know? Andy Murray all the way for Worm Wimbledon. And let me see what else we can speak on. I think that's pretty much it for now. Uh, just a lot of trade rumors and... Uh, stuff LeBron and Melo could they be pairing up the teams they said uh, that they could be packaging for that is Atlanta not gonna happen the Lakers probably not gonna happen and Cleveland which I already stated before I don't want it to happen because LeBron you sh oh keep your dignity man keep your pride man stay strong stay firm don't go back don't give in and go back to Cleveland they got Johnny Manziel, man. That eh, don't don't go back to Cleveland, man. Uh oh, the Celtics drafted on uh, Marcus Smart, which pretty much said, uh, Rajon Rondo, your time is you know, it's ticking. You know they got rid of the big three last year in trades, and um this year it seems like they're gonna get rid of the last piece, uh with Rondo just letting him walk. His contract slowly fade away, so um. That's it. It's a new age for the Celtics. Maybe they get Gordon Hayward. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully he goes to the Hawks. But, you know, maybe they get Gordon Hayward uh, pair up with his, you know, college bestie, Brad Stevens, young coach. Uh, they also have a couple other young pieces up in Boston. And with Marcus Smart, they're only going to get, you know, lottery picks over and over. And hopefully they can build up something young and promising up there also sacramento they drafted uh nick stoskis who was like one of my favorites in the draft because he's like a cow corver he he's a deadly three-point shooter but he also has the athleticism to donk and oh man he's he's a he's a beast on the offensive end um defensively he's he's a work in progress but he's six seven with long arms so he should be able to uh uh he should be able to make up for that you know eventually in the nba so, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Aaron Gordon went to the Magic. So, maybe the Magic have, you know, Aaron Gordon, you know. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, Oladipo. Aaron Gordon, Oladipo, Jamil Nelson. Uh, they're basically just, he's basically there because no one else wants him at this point of his career. Uh, all due respect to Jamil Nelson. He he was an all star. I wasn't an all star in the NBA, so but yeah. That's it. Until next time. Thank you all for watching. Ain't this what they've been waiting for? You ready? Uh uh. I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this.